Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is yet another Star Wars game from EA set between the events of two trilogies, with Battlefront 2 set between Episodes 6 and 7, and this game falling between Episodes 3 and 4. Perhaps the execs at EA were grown in vats and never had to endure long car trips as children, wedged between your big brother and that uncle who can never seem to find a job. So let me point something out to them. Being stuck in the nebulous middle ground of two larger and more developed things is not a comfortable place to be. How can I be bothered to care about a story when I know it's doomed by canon? Do you suppose they picked Cameron Monaghan to play a Jedi from Humble Beginnings in this game because he also played the Joker in Gotham? Which, coincidentally, is the mirror opposite of Mark Hamill's career path, who played a Jedi from Humble Beginnings and then went on to play the Joker. I mean, what are the odds? There's something a bit unsettling about EA's handling of the Star Wars license. Essentially, rather than craft a new and original experience, their goal has been to see what other Star Wars games worked in the past and stamp their own game using the mold. Hence, we have two new Battlefront games and now this which is either Jedi Outcast or the Force Unleashed to you depending on which generation of Star Wars you were born into. Eventually, you gotta move on and live your life. Find your destiny. Picking the bones of the hero's journey clean, are we? Start at lowest point, supply a friend who suggests the protagonist has greater things waiting for them, then kill that friend off by introducing the villain. At this point, it's as mind-numbing as reading the 10-paragraph essay on life and family every soccer mom writes into their online recipe. I just want to know how to make guacamole, you tart. Not about how you spent five years working in real estate before quitting to make your children smile by making green smoothies. I feel like someone would have made sure the ship that was being dismantled was nowhere near a large tentacle monster. Not because I believe that the Empire has any sort of concern for safety, but because the industrial accident just cost the Empire a lot of good scrap. While it's nice that Cal was able to save Prof with Force Stasis, how did he save himself? He fell from the same height as Prof and he didn't slow himself down. Master, trust only in the Force. Cal has a dream of his former Jedi Master warning him, and that Jedi is voiced by Travis Willingham, once again playing a protector of the people. Everybody up! Identification ready! The Inquisition learned of Cal using the Force from a droid hovering around the ship when he saved Prof, which should mean they have video footage of that event. They knew enough to know the person they were looking for was on this specific train car after all, yet they don't know what Cal looks like. Either they know exactly who they were looking for, or they don't and they would have to check a lot more people than this. It seems the Disney era of Star Wars doesn't believe it can create a villain if it doesn't resemble Darth Vader in some way. That's how we got Kylo Ren and now the second sister, who looks like Vader if he were gender swapped. Then came the Empire. <laughs> and engineers became scrappers. The workers? They just started getting worked. I'm not sure what Prof was hoping to accomplish with his speech. If he wanted to repay Cal for saving him, he could have claimed he was a Jedi they were looking for. This feels like he was trying to unionize, which I'm also going to guess the Empire isn't too keen on. No! This is the same person who will later lecture another character on not giving in to their anger. I found the Jedi! Did you now? I thought it was the second sister who found him by killing Prof, thus making Cal attack with a lightsaber out of anger. She just force pushed him into you. This game is like watching an eager to fit in teenager jump on fads as quick as he discovers them. You end up with a game that features platforming and climbing sections from Uncharted, the map and exploration mechanics of Metroid Prime, along with the combat and respawn systems of Dark Souls. I suppose Respawn did make a pretty okay game with this method, but what you can't make is a memorable game. Doing one thing extremely well is preferable to doing three things at a passable level. Why are there so many stormtroopers stationed on a train that is just hauling scrap? And why can't they order this train to stop like they did the one Cal was on before? I see this game is following George Lucas's philosophy of every frame is so dense. Get on board! Deborah Wilson has been in just about every game I played this year, and I honestly couldn't tell you the differences in each of her roles. The only thing that stands out about this one is that her eyes look like they were about to pop out of her skull even when she closes them. Don't try and hurry or anything. The Jedi you came all this way for is only escaping with your former master who you blame for everything bad that's happened to you. That door is probably not something you could expect to remain airtight once you fly into space. It would also be welded shut and need to be pried open once they land. We track Imperial communications. We heard the Inquisitors were heading to Braca. So we made our move. I imagine the Inquisitors head to a lot of places. Do you follow them to every one of them? And if you'd been doing that, you would have run into your old apprentice a lot sooner. This is about something bigger than just surviving. Like what? Like rebuilding the Jedi Order. 
Sarah has a plan to rebuild the Jedi Order. I mean, we're only up to Episode 9 and that still hasn't been accomplished. I'm sure that's going to pan out here in Episode 3.5. You were talking in your sleep. Weirdo. This is coming from someone that was staring at Cal as he slept. Cal has a special force ability that lets him experience memories imprinted on a certain object like Sarah's mandolin. That power is not just useful to a Jedi, but also to game developers looking for a gimmick for the trove of collectibles they want to scatter around the maps. But it requires someone strong in the force to pass its test. Sarah wants Cal to investigate the vault on Borgano that she believes is the key to rebuilding the Jedi Order. Only a force user can do it. Sarah is a former Jedi Master who severed her connection to the Force after she had an experience with the dark side. But Cal is suffering from survivor's guilt after the Jedi died during Order 66 and has lost most of his connection to the Force. Apparently, it's easier to work on someone else's problems than your own. Because if Sarah had bothered getting over her own issues, she could have done this a while ago. I'll share more of my plan after you reach the Vault. But until then, there's someone here I think you should meet. Would it kill you to tell him beforehand what he's here to find and who he's going to meet? Having a robot cling to your back while climbing walls and fighting has to be a hindrance. Imagine a house cat clinging to your shoulder and I think you would see just how much of a problem it would become. I'm not even sure how BD-1 clings to Cal. It's not like it has claws. In a game, you're expected to ignore the ludonarrative dissidents of the hero casually racking up a body count that would make Genghis Khan take a step back in horror. But basing a Jedi's leveling system on how many people he skewered with a lightsaber is a hard one to overlook. Cal has a vision of his master's training whenever he recalls a skill he needs like wall running. It is a respawn game after all. But considering Cal was working in a ship cracking yard where there's no sure footing, I'm quite certain the opportunity to recall wall running would have come up back then at some point. This game surprisingly returns to unlockables being found in game and not requiring a purchase. Well done. But I get the feeling there's a bit of passive aggression in this decision, since they all amount to which flavor of poncho you want to wear and what you want your lightsaber hilt to look like. Basically, the bottom tier unlockables in a loot box that exists only to keep you from getting the costumes you actually want. Meditating here, I was granted a premonition through the Force, a vision of doom. I have placed inside this vault a Jedi holocron containing a list of the names and locations of young Force sensitives throughout the galaxy. Maybe you should have considered warning the Jedi of that impending doom, or gathering up those children and teaching them the ways of the Force. Regardless, I don't see why Cordova was doomed to die. He wasn't traveling with any of the clone troopers who would have killed him during Order 66. Let me just sit down in this pool of water rather than the dry rock right behind me. Now my butt is uncomfortably wet, like I wanted. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A holo what? A holocron. It stores information, but only accessible to Jedi. Grease doesn't know what a holocron is, even though Sarah had one sitting on its kitchen counter. Think of a storm brewing down there. This might not be the best time to land. Eh, something strange. Those winds are interfering with our comms. Hey, Cordova mentioned something about peace in the eye of the storm. Well, I can just make out a settlement in the middle of it. Either that means this storm never fates, or Cordova had some damn impressive foresight. Grease mentioned Zepho is his favorite place, but seems surprised by the appearance of this storm. Like in Dark Souls, whenever you use a bonfire, or a meditation area in this case, all of the enemies respawn. This works a bit better narratively in Dark Souls since those games are all about cycles and the undead. Whereas in Star Wars, Cal is cutting down living people when he fights a stormtrooper. So am I to believe that while Cal is in a trance, reinforcements showed up and resumed all the patrols their comrades died protecting? This just goes to show that copying a good idea from one game takes a bit more than a straight copy-paste, because now the rest and leveling up mechanic doesn't make much sense. Nor does it make any sense that you have to collect the experience you drop when you die. If Cal dies, how does he even come back and collect previous experience? The Tomb of Elium illustrates the Zepho ancient custom of rolling ball and wind puzzles, truly a civilization ahead of its time. A hallucination about being hit by rocks triggers Cal's training to use a force push. Considering that later Cal has to learn a separate ability to pull things toward him, I have to wonder why force telekinesis is so mutually exclusive. Pulling and pushing shouldn't be that far away from each other on the spectrum. If the Zepho had contact with Kashyyyk, there is a good chance Chieftain Tarful will know about it. Normally, in a Metroidvania-style game, you have one location that opens up gradually as you acquire new abilities, but rather than tick a world off one at a time before moving on to the next, each world throws up a roadblock in the middle that stops Cal from progressing any further until he visits a different world, and once he progresses enough there, he encounters a new roadblock that has him return to the previous world, meaning you have to visit every world twice to complete them. If they were going to borrow the stasis puzzles from Dead Space, why not borrow the decapitation mechanics from that game while they were at it? Cal's lightsaber has no problem giving an alien or robot the business, but stormtroopers must be getting the blunt side since it only chars their armor like a campfire marshmallow. Your Padawan. Did she survive? No. There's no need for me to mockingly say, gee, I wonder who Sarah's Padawan was. 
Since it's so painfully obvious, your Fem Vader didn't also need to be the apprentice of an older Jedi who now mentors the protagonist. I was stunned to learn this game was written by Chris Avalon, the same man who wrote Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. Tell me we're not running that blockade. Oh, only as a last resort. I break the Mantis' transponder to transmit Imperial signals. Wouldn't they think it's highly suspicious that a broken down looking ship that is clearly not part of the Empire's fleet is landing on Kashyyyk where they are currently fighting an insurgency? And considering that masking your signal to look like an Imperial one works 19 years later, that's a pretty big hole in security that the Empire never plugs. The helmets AT-AT pilots wear should keep them from being knocked out unless it's a Wookiee slamming them together. Cal's physique makes even Luke look swole. Saul Guerrero from Rogue One is here in a cameo, representing Star Wars' other pointless middle child. Where are the two pilots Cal knocked out? They should have been on the floor inside the cockpit. We'll be in touch with your ship. You've done enough on this planet for now, so stop looking for that Wookiee chieftain and go do something on a different planet. We'll call you when you can progress further. Life can be full of annoyances, like forgetting the one thing you went to the store to buy and only realize it once you return home, meaning you had to go all the way back for it. Having what amounts to the same thing happen in a story's plot not once, but multiple times is an intentional failure of the game design. Now that the ship has made it through the storm of Zepho once, it will never have to worry about it again. Cal Kestis. How predictable. Was it really that predictable? You only met him the one time, knew nothing of what he was doing or his objective, and there's no reason to predict he would return to Zepho since most would assume he left Zepho after finding what he came here for the first time. Repeated, repeated, boss fights, boss fights. You fight Trilla four times in this game, actually. Convenient how these energy walls always interrupt lightsaber duels. I still wonder what purpose they serve besides that. Taking your helmet off for the big reveal doesn't really matter if the person you were talking to has never seen your face before. It's not like this is going to prove to him that you're Trilla. I always assumed that the dark side of the Force tended to make one look more like their inner self, twisted and warped. Hotness is the one thing that trumps the Force. I won't let you manipulate me. So sure are you? He says right before stopping in his tracks to allow Trilla to push all of his buttons. Your new master harbors great darkness. The look on her face when she saw what they had done to me, as I am now. She turned, exposing her true nature. She used the dark side. Of all the moments of weakness where one might give in to the dark side, this one is the most justifiable. I wouldn't think badly of someone who went into a rage over the mistreatment of someone they cared about, but this sin is more of a generalized one for Star Wars as a whole over the concepts of light and dark, as if justifiable anger doesn't exist. Since you're aware Sarah is on this planet, why don't you attack the ship at the landing area? It's not hard to find. Master Jaro might want to step back a bit rather than stand in front of the business end of a lightsaber while his Padawan trains to grab it with a force. If a shock disc is that effective, why doesn't everyone use them? There's no one that those can't subdue, and their only weakness is characters never thinking to use them again. Cal is captured by a bounty hunter who takes him off world to a combat arena. They lock Cal in a cell, separate him from BD-1 and his lightsaber, but still expected him to free himself and find his way down to the arena for the battle. There was an audience waiting for this fight. What if he never left his cell, or he remained unconscious for a few more hours? We had action on how long it would take to get here. And who are you? Why do Bloodsport arenas always attract the most annoying ring announcer possible? Well, that little detour was pointless. Thanks for the memories. I can accept that they use Imperial codes to get past the blockade the first time, but by the time they returned to Kashyyyk, the Empire should have been onto them. The Empire overran our position at the refinery. Saw retreated off-world. Some of us have joined the Wookiee fighters in the forests. I guess Saul's cameo is over. They would have been better off creating their own character who didn't have to disappear midway through the game. With bounce pads and downhill slopes, I'm assuming Sonic also calls Kashyyyk home. Might as well be Green Hill Zone. Huh. Thanks, BD. Those are the same stems Cal uses to heal. There's no way the dose for a human would have much effect on a bird of that size. And if it did, would mean the drug is so strong it would kill Cal. Not every animal you do a good deed for will let you ride it, and even fewer will know exactly where you want to go. Why is there so much blue food in Star Wars? If witches teleporting and reanimating the dead are kosher in Star Wars now, then I think people are angry over the wrong reasons with current Star Wars media. This is far more egregious to me than anything in The Last Jedi. He was right about you. Who? What? Jedi are thieves and selfish liars who bring nothing but death. I assume you mean the completely trustworthy man in a cloak Cal met earlier. What about Cal's actions prove that claim true? He's stolen nothing, lied about nothing, and only defended himself. If I were you, I'd be questioning the man who walks around in a cape. 
Right as Cal nears his reason for coming to Dathomir, he recalls the day his master was killed during Order 66. I don't think he ever forgot this moment, but for some reason it affects him so strongly this time that he breaks his lightsaber. I guess Cal wasn't sad enough yet for proper character development, though it's hard to convince me of Cal's sudden dilemma when he just brought down a giant bat while being tossed in the air. Not exactly the kind of thing a person with crippling survivor's guilt could pull off. We need to get off this ship. Quickly. Get to the escape pods. Well, what about you? I will create a distraction and meet you. Since your goal is to escape together, that seems like a terrible idea. Losing one weapon in a cutscene means you forget all knowledge of the Force. Because earlier in the game, Cal, in this exact same situation, had to remember Force grab training when he was a child. The clone trooper who followed Jaro in through the door doesn't bother taking a shot until the other clones are dead, and this one doesn't even try to shoot him, aiming at the door beside him despite how close they are. It's amazing these clones manage to kill him later. Yes, my blood is on you. Apprentice. Hallucinations will always tell you how much you suck, cliche. Cal, it's time I told you everything that happened to me when I escaped the Empire. I would think the time to tell him was shortly after your old Padawan showed up and started messing with his head. Instead, you remained silent and allowed mistrust to grow. But sure, now is the time because Cal is in a slump. I'm sure the story of how you were tortured and briefly gave into the dark side to free yourself, then cut yourself off from the Force because you couldn't deal with it will greatly inspire him. Maybe give him some winter clothes instead of your old lightsaber that doesn't work anymore. Cal should die quickly from hypothermia after a plunge into the water in an ice cave. Somehow BD-1 recorded himself in third person in this hollow bit. Cordova wiped BD-1's memory when they parted for… hell if I know. Since he wanted these children trained as a safeguard against the destruction of the Jedi Order, why didn't he do it himself instead of leaving it to someone else? He was the only one who foresaw the end of the Jedi, so he couldn't be certain there would be anyone left to find and train the children. And there's a bit of a time limit on this, since kids grow up. Also, since Sarah's specialty is decryption, why couldn't she have just accessed all the information in BD-1's memory and skipped all the searching? Yeah, you're right. There's still a chance. It's good that you're motivated, but you should still be freezing to death. You were wrong to return here unarmed. Not unarmed. Well, I'm glad we had that journey to another planet just so Cal could come back to Dathomir and prove he's no longer holding on to survivor's guilt. This level was halted at the 99% completion mark just so you could do that. Marin has taken off her hood. That means she's more reasonable now. As a reminder, the last time Cal saw her, she summoned a horde of her undead sisters to attack him and Malakos. Nothing has changed since then to make her so much more reasonable. Not only does Marin look like a Mortal Kombat character, she performs fatalities too. A very good friend of mine told me to go out and find my place in the galaxy. And you listen. Oh, well, no. But... Life has this funny way of forcing you on the path forward anyway. That funny way was my good friend being murdered because of me. Notice how Cal hasn't suffered any grief over Prof's death while Jaro sent him on a vision quest. I will join you. That's cool. Could you turn off all the zombies that you summon so Cal can get back to his ship safely? No? Are you sure it's something you should find? What do you mean? The children on that list. If you take them from their homes to train as Jedi, won't they be hunted like you? It's a good question, one they should have been asking themselves since the beginning, along with how they would ever convince parents to give up their children for Jedi training when that would mean painting a target on their back. I lead the remnants of my people into the great unknown, hoping that we will finally find peace. If you're going to create an ancient alien race that disappeared and then force the player to find the ruins of that race, maybe have some payoff for it. There was clearly some calamity the Zepho suffered. They left a warning, which doesn't really warn of anything specific, just to be wary of the dark side, which isn't exactly unknown information. Not even an explanation for how Trilla found Borgano. After all, this place was on no galactic maps. Also, if Trilla is here, why didn't she destroy the Mantis? She couldn't have missed it. It's right next to this place. She even dropped stormtroopers here with seemingly no way for them to leave. Guess you made a mistake not killing me on Brock then. A scant mercy. I waited one meaningless Padawan against a prize that will win me the Emperor's favor. You did nothing of the sort. You tried your best to stop him on Bracca. You didn't even know Sarah was going to come after Cal or that she was looking for the holocron. When Cal grabs Trilla's lightsaber, he sees her pass through a force echo. However, he's never been left defenseless by these visions before. Also, why didn't he see this vision of the past when Sarah gave him her old lightsaber on Ilum? After all, she was tortured just like Trilla and was present for this. I know where she's taking it. There's a fortress. Where they take Jedi. Where the Inquisitors come from. That's an assumption at best. What if she took it straight to the Emperor on Coruscant? Or just transmitted the information in the Holocron to the Empire already? Do you ever feel it's unfair how quickly non-player characters can get over the same thing that took the main character an entire game worth of growth and inner discovery to heal from? By the right of the Council, 
by the will of the Force, Cal Kestis. Rise, Jedi Knight. Congrats on your GED Jedi certification. This isn't good. With the defenses I got, our usual tricks just aren't gonna cut it. I think the Star Destroyers would have already detected you. And how is this any worse than at Kashyyyk? There were only two Imperial Star Destroyers in orbit above that planet as well. I knew you'd come back for this. Then why weren't you better prepared? Cal and Sare had an easy time sneaking into this fortress. Even when Darth Vader is shoehorned into a plot, it's still worth removing a sin. You have failed me, Inquisitor. Did she really though? She recovered the holocron, and it's still inside this room with you, since Cal and Sare haven't escaped yet, meaning she's lured two Jedi who survived Order 66 right to you. Darth Vader has turned into Jason Voorhees in the way he can just inexplicably appear somewhere even when it makes no sense, like here even though he destroyed the walkway leading to the elevator, and then again at this door, even though there is no way he could arrive here faster than Cal did. This is an underwater hallway with no clear secondary path that could circle around. <laughs> Yeah, stop doing the thing that is keeping Vader from killing you since it's the dark side. Sometimes the light side of the Force just seems really dumb. How did Marin get down to the surface? And how did she get Cal and Sare back to the Mantis? Cal and Sare landed on the planet in drop pods in the ocean. If Marin could just teleport herself and them back to the Mantis, then she could have done the same to get them onto the surface, or right into the room with a holocron. Their destiny should be trusted to the Force. Maybe you should have just left the damn thing hidden then. Both the holocron plot and the Zepho plot amounted to nothing. But then again, we all knew that was going to be the case. Dark side. 